Hi, this is George Thomas, W5JDX, and you may recognize me from Ham Nation and AmateurLogic.tv. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about a rig I have in my shack here that I use for D-Star and also as a great FM rig. It's the ICOM ID-880H. This rig allows you to enter the world of D-Star economically. The 880H is a switchable VHF-UHF dual-band radio and has a wide-band receiver that covers 118 to 173.995, 230 to 549.995 MHz, and 810 to 999.990 MHz. In addition to the ham bands, you can listen to aviation, marine, weather channels, and other utility communications. To make the radio easier to program, you can download the free CS880 cloning program. You'll need a programming cable to use the software. It can either be the OPC-1529R, the OPC-478, or the OPC-478UC. The rig also supports RT Systems cloning software. There are 1,052 memory channels that can be labeled with 8 characters each, and multiple scan functions that operate up to 50 channels per second, like full scan, selected band scan, programmed scan, memory scan, memory mode scan, all bank scan, selected bank scan, bank link scan, program scan link, skip scan, priority scan, tone scan, and access repeater scan. Features include 50 watts of output power for both VHF and UHF, built-in noise filter for AM FM mode, data and 9600 or 1200 baud packet jacks on the rear, plus or minus 2.5 parts per million frequency stability, adjustable microphone sensitivity, monitor function to listen to a weak signal, 14 variable tune steps, auto repeater function automatically turns on or off duplex operation and tone encoder, weather channel receive with weather alert, 16 DTMF memory channels of 24 digits, IPX4, auto power save, power off and power on, and a 10 dB built-in attenuator. The ID-880H can transmit and receive D-Star format digital voice and 950 baud data communication simultaneously. And of course it makes a nice analog FM rig as well. You can add a third-party GPS receiver and position data is shown on the display and can be sent to other stations. The GPS-A mode assists in DPRS mode operation to send your position information to an APRS server. On the rear of the unit, from left to right, there's an antenna connector for a 50 ohm VHF UHF antenna that has a standard PL259 connector, and then the cooling fan, and next to that the data jack that you can connect a PC through the optional data communications cable OPC1529R for low speed data communications in the DV mode or data cloning with cloning software like the CS80-880 free download. You can also connect a GPS receiver through the optional data communications cable OPC1529R for GPS operation. Next we've got the packet jack and this will connect to a TNC for data communications and it can support 1200 baud or 9600 baud packet communications. Then we've got the external speaker jack for a normal 8 ohm speaker and we've got a strong 2 watts of audio output here. You can also connect a cloning cable OPC 478 or 478 UC or an OPC-474 for data cloning. And next we've got the power which accepts 13.8 volts plus or minus 15 percent. Now let's take a look at the front of the unit. The first button here at the top left is the menu or lock key button. Press it once and you'll enter the menu mode where you can select what item you need to set. Press it again to exit that mode. If you hold it in for a second it locks the unit, so now you can't spin the knob here and knock it off frequency. Hold it for one second again, and it's back to normal mode. The second button is the Select Memory Write Memory Write key. Uh, you push and enter this to select the Memory Write mode for memory channel programming. If you want to exit that, you can just press the menu key back at the top. You can also push and hold to store the frequency operating mode, etc. into the selected memory channel. 
The tuning dial selects the operating frequency. It also selects the memory channel, the settings in the set mode items, and the scanning direction. The band mode key is activated by pressing the tuning dial. If you press and enter it, it selects the band state. Uh, here we're showing either the frequency or the alphanumeric name of the channel that we've selected. If you push and hold it for a second, then you can enter the operating mode selection state. Of the buttons below the display, the leftmost is the VFO megahertz tuning and scan key. You press this to select VFO mode. Uh, during VFO mode, you can push it to select 1 megahertz or 10 megahertz steps, or you can push and hold this for one second to enter the scan type selection. Next to that is the memory call tone key. You can press that to select a memory channel, a call channel, or a weather channel. During FM and FM narrow mode operation, you can press and hold this for one second to enter the tone function selection state. And during DV mode operation, you can push and hold it for one second to select the digital call sign squelch, digital code squelch, and no digital squelch operation. The digital squelch only opens when you receive a signal addressed to your own call sign or a signal that includes a matching digital code. You can silently wait for calls from others, and you can independently set the digital squelch functions in the VFO mode, memory mode, call channel mode, or DR function. The DR button means D-star repeater, and it's also the UR key. You push and select the DR mode with this button. You can also press it back to go back to DV mode, and during DV mode operation, if you push and hold it for one second, you can enter your call sign selection state and the DV mode is automatically selected when other mode is selected. The CS button is the call sign or receive call sign set keys. During DV operation, you push it to display the current call sign. You can push it and hold it for one second to set the received call sign. The RXCX is great to use, but you do need to reset the CS to CQ, CQ, CQ after your call sign routed call or you'll always be calling the last received call sign. The output power duplex key allows with each press to change between low, medium, and high power. You can push and hold it for one second to enter duplex operation. If you turn the frequency dial, you can toggle through the duplex steps. And the last button here is the monitor DTMF key. Push to turn the monitor function on or off. This essentially defeats the squelch. Push and hold for one second to enter the DTMF set screen. Right beside that, we've got the squelch knob that you can use to adjust your squelch. If you turn it past the 12 o'clock position, you put in place a variable attenuator with up to 10 dB of attenuation. Right here between the two knobs is a power switch that you turn the unit on and off with. Just hold it for one second. And at the top here, we've got the volume control. You can do an awful lot with the microphone of this rig, so let's take a look at it. Right here we have the VFO lock key. It performs the same function as the VFO lock key on the rig itself. Press it to select VFO mode, or press it and hold it for a second to activate the lock function. The push to talk switch is here on the side. Of course, we press that to transmit. There's also a one touch function on there where you can just tap it once and it goes in the transmit mode. Tap it again and it goes back to receive mode so you don't have to hold the button down the whole time you talk. The up and down arrow keys here are used for various functions in the rig to change operating frequencies, memory channels, and settings in the set mode. You can press and hold either one of these keys for one second to start scanning. The activity indicator LED here lights red while any key except function or DTMF is pushed or while transmitting and it lights green while the one-touch push-to-talk function is in use. The function indicator LED will light orange while function is activated, and it indicates the secondary function of keys can be accessed. It'll light green when DTMF is activated, and DTMF signals can be transmitted with the keypad. By default, the keys on the microphone keypad below operate according to the black legend that's printed on them. Once you press the function key, you'll notice it has a red legend. Then the functions of the keypad below 
operate according to the red labels. The green DTMF button activates the DTMF send function. When you press it, then the green numbers and letters written on the keypad below are active. The two programmable function keys are located here, and these allow you to program and recall a desired transceiver configuration. The band key is located here on the top right. You can push that to select the operating band, and the memory and call key is located here, and with that you can push and select the memory mode or push and hold it for one second to select the call channel. Now let's take a look at the microphone keypad. Most of these have a digit on it like 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Those are to be used when sending DTMF tones. Let's take a look at the first key here on the microphone keypad. The black legend says MONI. That's its primary function and that switches the monitor on and off, basically defeating the squelch. The red legend says bank. If we press the function key and then press the button, in VFO mode it'll select the operating band. In memory mode it enters the bank selection. The second button here, scan 2, starts and stops scanning, and if you pressed function first, then the secondary function of this button is to start and stop tone scanning. The third button here starts or stops priority watch. And if it's in secondary function mode, it turns the one-touch PTT function on or off. The fourth button here selects high output power, or in secondary function, it turns the DTCS squelch on. Button number five selects mid output power, or in secondary function, it turns the DTCS pocket beep function on. Button number six selects low output power and its secondary function. It turns the DTMF memory encoder function on. Button number seven selects a minus duplex operation. And secondary function, it turns a subaudible tone encoder on. Button number eight selects plus duplex operation. Or secondary function, turn the CTCSS pocket beep function on. And button number nine, selects simplex operation, or the secondary function, it turns the tone squelch function on. The star button decreases the audio output level, and its secondary function, it sends a 1750 hertz tone signal for one half second. Now the zero button here increases the audio output level, or secondary function, it sends a 1750 hertz tone signal while pushing and holding. And finally, the pound key here adjusts the squelch level decrement. The secondary function is it locks the digit keys on the keypad, including the A through D, the pound, and the star keys. The buttons on the right-hand side here are labeled A, B, C, and D. The A button cancels frequency entry, it cancels the scan of priority watch, and it exits the memory screen. The secondary function it stores a set frequency, etc., into the selected memory channel when it's pushed and held. Or it advances a memory channel number while continuously pushed after programming is complete. The B button enters the set menu screen. It also enters selected set mode or enters the programmable condition after selecting a set mode item. The secondary function of it is to turn off the DTMF memory encoder. The C button sets the keypad for numeric input, and it returns to the previous indication after entering set mode. Its secondary function, it turns a subaudible tone encoder, pocket beep, or CTCSS, DTCS, tone squelch off. The D button adjusts the squelch level increments, or secondary function, it mutes the audio and the mute function is released when any other operation is performed. We hope this brief video has given you a good look into the capabilities of the ID-880H. For more information on D-Star call sign programming, check out the separate video on D-Star call signs expanded for the ID-880H and ID-5100A.